What is up? We're on Ty Lopez's live stream right now. Uh, I'm Stephen Lau, the Credit Mentor. I'm teaching Ty's Credit Mentoring Program. Uh, we're live here from Beverly Hills at Ty's Mansion. Here, we did a live call last night. I kind of answered some questions on credit, gave you some, guys some tips that you can immediately start using. And uh, for those of you that missed that live call, I'm here again doing a quick Q&A, uh, giving you guys some stuff to walk away with today to immediately start uh, applying to your credit. So uh, we're just gonna get started. Um, video team here is prepping, getting, um, getting the comments rolling, seeing how you guys are doing. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, to give you a quick intro, uh, if you guys haven't seen my face or haven't seen any of the ads, I'm Stephen Lau, um, Instagram handle Laostep, L-I-A-O-S-T-E-P if you're not following me. Um, I'm from Ohio. A year ago, I dropped out of Stanford, uh, got $3 million in lines of credit in less than a year, and I'm sitting here with around 220 credit cards. Uh, it's probably around 230 now. Uh, just keep applying for cards. And I'm going to teach you all the secrets that I used in this mentoring program that we're putting together, where uh, all the strategies I used, how to call, how to speak to underwriting teams, um, how to use credit cards to get reward points, and how to travel the world for free, how to get cash back, um, how to maximize your credit line, um, teach you the secrets how I got the three million in less than a year. Um, and it starts from, you know, you start with less than uh, like average credit score all the way to if you already have 800 credit score, any of these things can apply to you because we not only teach personal, we also teach business credit. So if you know what like a FICO score, a Vantage score is, that's great. Um, but there's also stuff that we talk about how to, you, uh, how to grow your Paydex score for your business uh, accounts. Um, do we have some comments rolling? Someone says, yo, what's good? What's his name? I'll, I'll, I'll shout him out. Uh, Jamani Buckner. Jamani. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to give us some quick uh, info. If you guys were in last, uh, last night tuning in, you probably have already seen a lot of this information. Uh, but we're just going to do a quick recap. And then uh, one of the first things we talked about yesterday was getting a Credit Karma account. Um, a lot of you guys you know, go through high school and go through college and come out and the school system has failed you because you still don't know how to open a credit card. You don't know how to take out a mortgage. You don't know how to uh, take out a loan and uh, how credit really works. So we're going to go over the six biggest factors that apply to credit and how it affects your score. You know, Uncle John, Aunt Sally telling you don't open a credit card because it's evil. Um, we're going to debunk some of these myths so you guys can walk away today with some more confidence in applying for your first credit card or maybe your fifth credit card or just getting more lines of credit, um, not going into debt, and strategies that I use to keep uh, my credit up there. So I started off with a 580 credit score. That's where most people start off, 580 to 620. Um, and from there, in a year, I grew it. Right now, I'm sitting around 780. Um, let's see. I just want to see some of these comments. Where's Ty Lopez at? I, I don't know where Ty is. Um, he's, he's somewhere here. He's headed to San Diego today um, from Michigan. That's cool. I'm already over 825, but what does that get me? We'll talk about all that, you know, some, some cards that you can get if you're below 620, some cards that you can get if you're right in the average range, and some, like, premium cards that you can get once you hit that, like, 760, 770, or 800 range. Um, so one of the first things we're going to talk about is the six factors of credit. Um, we all know that paying your credit card on time is good for your credit, right? That's payment history. That's one of the factors of your credit. Um, second thing is, is credit card utilization. This is a thing that most people don't know about. Um, you know, Uncle John and Sally just tells you, put a turn on automatic payment, use a lot of your credit, max out your credit card, and just pay it off at the end of the month, and that's good for your credit. Well, that's actually hurting your credit. If you don't already know, credit card utilization means, like, for example, if you have a $1,000 line of credit um, and you spend $500, you're using 50% of your total credit. What you want to keep is you want to keep that utilization under 9%. So, you know, if you're using $900 of credit a month and paying it off, sure, you're getting the payment history on time, right? But 90% of utilization is actually hurting your score. And to give you an idea, it's actually hurting your score as much as if you just didn't pay that bill, if you missed that payment. So one of the first things that you guys should be walking away with today, if you already have a credit card, make sure your utilization is down. Um, if you owe some credit, or if you owe the banks, if you owe these credit cards money, 
try and figure out a way to pay it off as soon as possible. One of the rule of thumb that I use, I treat all my credit cards like debit cards. Um, in some circumstances, once you get to some more advanced techniques, you can uh, go into the red and come back. Um, but the strategy I use is if you only have X amount of money in your bank, that's how much credit you should have. Doesn't matter. If I have $3 million of line of credit, but I have $20 in my bank account, guess what? I'm only spending $20 this month. So good rule of thumb, only spend what you have. If you only spend what you have, you never owe money. You never have to worry about going to debt. Um, I was reading some of the comments on a previous video. As so I said, yeah, $3 million, you go $3 million in debt. That's not true. Um, you just don't use the credit. Uh, or you use it uh, and you accumulate smart debt. Uh, you can transfer between doing some smart balance transfers. Um, but again, you, know, you don't want to uh, go into the red if you don't have the money to pay it back, right? You don't need that Rolex. You don't need that Gucci slide. Or you don't need to buy stuff you do not need. Um, only make sure you're sp using your credit to buy stuff you actually need or investing in businesses that uh, uh, can produce an ROI. Um, so we're going to go, we've already been, gone through two of these uh, factors of credit. Um, if you want to know where I'm actually getting these six factors of credit, go sign up for a Credit Karma account. If you're watching on your phone, go to, go on your laptop, go to creditkarma.com. If you're watching on a computer, go to your phone, download the Credit Karma app, sign up for your uh, Credit Karma account. It's going to ask for your social. This is another thing. A lot of people are scared that, you know, checking your credit hurts your credit score. Again, a myth that gets passed around because people don't really understand how credit works. Uh, checking your credit for your own personal use does not hurt your credit. Um, checking your credit at, for, to actively apply for more credit is going to hurt your credit, and that's called a hard inquiry and a soft inquiry. Soft inquiries do not hurt, hard inquiries do. Um, so going to apply for a Credit Karma account does not hurt your, uh, is that good? We're good? Yeah, Instagram crashed again? Got it. So um, you, what you want to do is you apply for a Credit Karma account. It's going to come up with these six factors. You're going to see your TransUnion credit report, and you're going to see your Equifax credit report. These are two of the bureaus that essentially report on what your credit is. There's also a third one called Experian. Uh, if you want to know what your Experian credit report looks like, you can go to Experian.com, and they'll actually give you your credit report for free. Um, so we're going to talk about these next four uh, in, um, factors that impact your credit and how you can use it to improve. So, all right, for those of you hopping on Instagram again, uh, sorry, the feed just cut out. I'm just going to reintroduce myself real quick. My name is Steven Lau. I'm with Ty. I'm teaching Ty's credit mentoring program. Uh, I dropped out of Stanford a year ago. I'm from Ohio. And uh, so if you're from Ohio, shout out to you guys. Um, and so I accumulated $3 million of lines of credit. Uh, I, you know, proved that I can handle my credit pretty well. Um, I have 200 credit cards. I got the Centurion Black card um, all in this past year. And I've been traveling the world for free. I actually made some good side money uh, on credit cards. So a lot of people like think credit cards are so evil and scary. There's actually some ways to make money using credit cards. Um, that's pretty simple. It's like a step-by-step -step process. And we're teaching all of that in the credit mentoring program. Uh, Ty, for the next seven days, is actually cutting the price in half uh, with his, uh, he's bringing 300 people from rags to riches. So he's actually going to pay half of the cost for the program for you guys to get into the credit mentoring program. Um, so with that said, if Instagram's back on, we're going to uh, hop right back in. Um, if you missed out on the stream Instagram, you guys can check out on YouTube. The stream's going to be on there after. Um, so some of the other things. So we have credit card utilization. That's how much percentage of your credit you're using. You want to keep that under 9%. Uh, your payment history, that's the most obvious one. Pay your credit cards on time. Pay your loans on time. Pay your uh, you know, mortgage on time. The third one is derogatory marks. So this kind of goes hand in hand with payment history, but it's not just you know missing a payment. It's when you continuously miss a payment and your uh, your credit card bill gets sent to collections, and that becomes a derogatory mark. And those are not good. Uh, you essentially want to have zero of those. But if you don't, it's okay. Uh, if you have like one or two, there's actually a way. It's called CFPB.gov. It's a government website. You can dispute it. Um, even if you are in the wrong, there's ways to renegotiate that, and that's what CFPB is there for. You can go and dispute it and, and say, like, hey, I was inexperienced. I wasn't that uh, well-versed with credit. And here, I'm trying to repay, my, uh, repay this uh, collection. 
and I was seeing if you guys would be able to, as a goodwill gesture, remove it. And the good part about CFPB is they have to respond to you within 14 days. So in 14 days, you get a response back, um, either yes or no, and then it, once you get your response, it's either a good to go or you can actually, um, you can restart it and appeal it. Cool, all right. Um, so now uh, we have these three factors of credit. Uh, we have the, and actually, can we, can we tear this down? Tear this down. So for you guys tuning in, if you missed the first three credits, I'm just going to write this on the board. Put it up there. Six factors of credit. All right, so the first one that we had was payment history. The most obvious one. This is just paying your credit card, paying your loans on time. We have number two. Did Instagram just crash again? Uh, no, it's, um, it's fine on our side. Uh, this, this, this Instagram just crashed. Uh, so the second one, we have credit card utilization. So what credit card utilization is, if you missed out, uh, the utilization is how much of your total credit line you're actually using. So if you have a $1,000 credit line, and you're only using $100, using 10% of it. You want to keep that number under 10%. Um, Ideally, 9% or below. So the third one, we had derogatory marks. So this is similar to payment history, but it's when you continuously miss a payment and then it gets sent to collections and the collection agency comes after you. That's where you don't want to be. You want to have ideally zero of these marks. So we're going to go on to the fourth factor of credit. Um, if you want to know where I'm actually getting these, uh, I just kind of shouted out to you guys. You said go to creditkarma.com. Go to creditkarma.com. You're going to find all of these six factors on there. Uh, checking your credit does not hurt your credit if it's just for personal use. If you're not actively applying for it, which when you go on Credit Karma, you're not actively seeking new credit, you're good. Instagram is crashed again? Got it. So for the fourth one, we have the average age of credit. So there's two factors here for age. There's the average, and then there's the oldest account. So what this means is if you have one credit card and you open it today and you wait a year, that credit card is a year old now. And so that one credit card now has an age of one year. And if you only have one, your average age is also a year. Now, if you open one credit card today, wait a year, it's a year old. And then you open a second credit card a year from now, that credit card is going to be zero years old. And with one year old credit card on the, sec on the first credit card that you open, you're going to have an average age of six months. So what that means is you essentially want to have a high average age and then also the oldest account. And the number, the magic number for the people trying to get an 850 perfect credit score, which I do not have because I've only had credit for about a year and a half, um, is to have over nine years of credit. So credit is not something that you just start out with you know, for this month or the next six months and then you just forget about it. It's something that you're going to continuously use uh, throughout your life um, all the way till you die. So this is something that you want to be able to uh, understand the average age. Um, the age thing is also part of the reason why a lot of people think when they open a credit card, it hurts their score. Um, opening a credit card doesn't directly hurt your score, but it does uh, lower the average age of accounts. So what that means is, you know, if you have a nine-year, uh, if you've had one credit card for nine years, and then all of a sudden you open another credit card with zero years old, your second credit card, your average age becomes four and a half, right? Because nine divided by two is four and a half. So now you have a four and a half year old credit for average age, and that's going to significantly drop your score. So the other thing is we're going to talk on the fifth factor is number of accounts. The number of accounts you have, you want to have 21 lines of credit reporting. So not just lines of credit, but just credit accounts. So this could be a loan, this could be a mortgage, this could be you know, a car payment, this could be credit cards. These are all things that you want, and you want to have more than 21 of them to have an 850 credit score or more. Again, where did I get that number? If you go to creditkarma.com, you'll actually see it there. Um, if you're just tuning in now, what we're talking about here, we're talking about credit. Um, we're talking about the credit mentoring program on how you can take some tips away from here and also follow my steps on how I got to $3 million lines of credit, how I got 220 credit cards. So I'm going to share some of the secrets I use to get there um, in this credit mentoring program. Um, so that's, do we actually have the link for that? The link is in the description, right? To the, uh, 
the, yeah, the course. Yes. So if you're, if you're watching from the platforms, the link's in the description, or if it's in this title, it's somewhere. Look for it. Um, Ty's actually cutting the price in half. He's paying half of the cost uh, as part of his uh, paying it forward. He's going to pay. He's going to bring 300 people from rags to riches. So make sure you get into that course. It's only available for the next seven days if you get in. So jumping right back in here. Oh, OK, we have it right here. So if you're on Facebook Live, the link is tylopez.com forward slash credit secrets. If you're on Instagram, it's tylopez.com forward slash credit line. If you're on Twitter, it's tylopez.com forward slash build credit. If you're on YouTube Live, tylopez.com forward slash credit hacks. Um, so we're going to hop back in here, talk about the six factors of credit. So we talked about the age, the average age, and then the number of accounts. So why is this important, right? Say you have one credit card that you just kept open, and you kept open for 10 years, and then you realize that you're never going to be able to achieve an 850 credit score because you only have one credit card, and you need 21 or more accounts, right? So this is where the number of accounts comes in to be very important. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is now. So what that means is if you open a card today, it's going to be zero years old. But then in nine years, it's going to be nine years old. So what you want to do is you want to get to 21 accounts as quick as possible um, before you get a mortgage. If you plan on taking out a mortgage, I don't recommend getting credit cards in rapid succession. But if you're not actively, uh, or if you don't have any plans to get a mortgage, if you don't have any plans to take out a big loan, this is where you want to start building up the number of accounts you have. All of your accounts are going to be zero years old, and they're going to be pretty new. But in nine years, the age is going to come in, and it's going to help really support and stabilize your credit, because you're going to end up having 21 accounts, all of them being nine years or more. Um, so these two right here will very, very, very highly impact your score um, when they're combined together here. And then we have the last one. This is hard inquiries. We're going to quickly answer some questions on hard inquiries. So checking your score on Credit Karma does not hurt your score because that's a soft inquiry. Soft inquiries are when you're checking it for your own personal use. And hard inquiries are when you're actively seeking credit. Um, so the difference between this, the hard inquiries, you know, is just you trying to get credit. Um, the thing is about hard inquiries, a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on it because they think that hard inquiries hurt your credit score the most. Because when you open a new credit card, you'll say, oh my god, I dropped 30 points or 40 points. In actuality, hard inquiries are only supposed to drop your points five to six points per inquiry you do. Um, the thing is, is that correlation doesn't imply causation. So when you open a new credit card, it's also lowering the average age, which is here. And then it's also, um, you're, you're increasing the number of counts, but you're lowering the average age. And this uh, factor number four is actually why your score is dropping. However, if you had, you know, say, 100 credit cards and they're all you know, five years old, opening one new credit card is not going to impact your score as much because one credit card with a zero age averaged into you know, 50 or 100 credit cards or accounts that you have, it's not going to lower that as much. Versus if you only have one credit card that's you know, a year old and you open a new credit card, it just divided that by two. Um, so I'm going to take some quick questions here. I'm going to hop around Instagram. I'm going to start on Instagram right here. Um, do you guys have any questions on the six factors of credit? If you do, go ahead, shoot it into the comments below. I'm going to try and answer some of this. Let's see. Someone asked on uh, YouTube, how long after applying for, how long after getting your first card do you apply for your second card? How long after your first card do you apply for your second card? One of the things that we talk about in the course, which I'm going to let you in on a little secret, is um, how do you combine hard inquiries? So a lot of people say, hey, Steven, you have 220 credit cards. Does that mean you have 220 inquiries? Um, what I actually do is you combine hard inquiries. If you apply for multiple credit cards from the same bank in one day, you can actually get all that combined under one hard inquiry. So I could apply for 10 credit cards from one bank and only get hit with one hard inquiry and have the potential to get 10 credit cards. Is it likely that I'm going to get approved for all 10? Probably not. But I could at least get approved for one or two. So the time before you're applying for your first credit card and your second, I would suggest just applying for two or three from the same bank. And maybe you get approved for one, and then you get denied for the other two. Uh, one of the things we talked about in uh, last night in a live stream, I'm just going to quickly briefly mention it. We also go in depth on it in course, 
is the reconsideration line. So when you get denied for a credit card, it's not the like, last chance you get. They send you a letter, and there's actually a phone number on there. You call it. You can speak to an underwriter, and you can actually humanize your credit report. So humanizing yourself is really important because it's not just about a number, right? You're, a 760 or a 580 or a 641 doesn't define you. So when you call in, you can actually say that, hey, my name is Steven. Um, I really want this credit card. Here's the reasons why. Um, here's how I'm going to use this credit card. Um, hear me out. You know, humanize yourself. Make them see you as you, not just a number. So you can actually use that to your advantage. It's called a reconsideration line. And we actually put together scripts inside the credit mentoring course where we teach you how to speak to these underwriters and how to overturn a denial into an approval. Someone asked, does, does canceling a credit card hurt your credit? Canceling a credit card does not hurt your credit score, but I highly suggest not doing it unless if there's a high annual fee and you cannot get that waived. And you can get uh, annual fees waived through something called a retention offer. Um, you can, again, we talk about it in the course. We're not, I'm not going to go in depth on it. If you want to join the course, we talk about it. We give scripts on how to negotiate and get $450, $550 annual fees. Sam, the video guy back here, he actually got his annual fee waived by calling in using the same strict script. So it works. We have a lot of testimonials of that happening, you know, getting $95 annual fees waived and then still taking advantage of how great the card is. Um, let's see. So I would pay off, so to repeat the question, it's if you have multiple cards with high utilization, how do you prioritize the ones to pay off first? What you want to do is pay off the ones with high interest first. And if needed, if you need, actu if you need help, open credit cards that have 0% APR, no interest for a year or like two years. One of them is the City Simplicity. The Chase Slate is a second credit card. Both of these credit cards have no interest, and you can balance transfer from other cards on there. So if you have a card you, know, you owe $1,700 on, you can actually balance transfer that and not pay the 22% interest that's going to screw you over, and you end up paying like $4,000 after a year. You can take Take that and balance transfer it onto a card where it gives you a year to figure out how you're going to pay it off, pay off um, the uh, pay off the credit card. So that's how I would prioritize it. I would prioritize the ones with the highest interest first, and if it's possible and you can get approved for, balance transfer the balances from those onto a card with zero percent interest. So income is, is, has a high correlation with the credit line you get. So what will happen is you know, if you put in you only make $10,000 a year, you're going to get a lower credit line than somebody that puts in I make a million dollars a year. Um, however, that's not the end. Once you get the card, you can show that you're responsible using it. Maybe buy one or two dollar items once a month and just pay it off and then just never touch it again. And then three months later, you can actually call in and request for a CLI, a credit line increase. And what happens here is you can say like, look, the reason I'm not using your credit card is because you gave me such a small amount, of, uh, small amount of credit. How am I supposed to buy some of the items I actually want? So I just revert to using my debit card. And they want you to use their credit card. So it gives them more incentive to give, extend to you more credit. So never lie on on a credit card application, say that you know if you make ten thousand, say you make ten thousand, uh, because you it's it's fraud if you say like you know you make ten thousand, you're saying you're making a million. Um, so that is a direct correlation with uh, the size of your credit with and your income. And then so I have about two minutes left before I have to hop onto another jet. I'm head back home in Vegas. So if you're in Vegas, hit me up on Instagram or Snapchat. Uh, my Instagram handle is Laostep, L I A O S T E P. And uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and write that down. And my snap is just my name. So. I travel a lot. If you guys want to see this in action, me going through with all the credit cards and all my credit card reward points, staying at Ritz-Carlton's, flying on private jets. Um, again, a year ago, I had nothing. This was all very new to me a year ago, and I made this all happen. So you know, if you're on IG, follow me. Hit me up in the DMs. If you see me in a city you're in, maybe we can meet up. 
if you see me on uh, Snap, that's where I'm more active and more intimate. Um, you know, hit me up on Snap. Uh, let me know what city that you see me in, and maybe we can grab some lunch. Um, so I have about one minute left. I want to take a couple more questions. Uh, so there's a lot on YouTube. A lot on. Got it. So yeah, a couple people are asking how to get rid of hard inquiries. Um, there's really not a direct way. Um, however, CFPB is one of those. So if you don't recognize a hard inquiry, you can go to cfpb.gov, dispute a hard inquiry. And nine times out of 10, they usually don't investigate too much into it. And we'll just give you a pass and give you the benefit of the doubt that that hard inquiry actually didn't happen. So that actually, I actually did get a couple of my hard inquiries off. Um, I think it was a Victoria's Secret credit card. I don't know, you know, like I was running out of credit cards to apply for, and I had a hard inquiry from Vic Victoria's Secret. It was from Community Bank, um, and I got it waived. So it does work. Hit up cfpb.gov, and that's one other thing. Um, let's see. Do we have one more question? One last question I'll answer before I have to hop on does applying for a okay so this is coming in from facebook does applying for a higher credit line cause a hard inquiry applying for a higher credit line uh, for certain banks do cause hard inquiries so they usually will read a statement to you and disclosure saying that if you continue we will pull another credit report absolutely do not just let it naturally happen other banks will do a soft pull and they actually won't hurt your credit. And then if, that, if that's the case, you know, you're not risking anything so you can get your credit uh, up through that way. So um, it's a, it, it's do your research, right? So like US Bank sometimes does it, sometimes doesn't. American Express actually has it inside their website where you can just request a credit line increase of up to three times without a hard inquiry. Um, so that's another, so it's all dependent on the credit card. Um, so before I hop off, just want to push this to you, like we're teaching the four pillars of getting good credit, um, how to have excellent credit and how to extend it for a long amount of time throughout your life and how to build good strategies and build good habits. Um, second one, how to travel for free, um, how I traveled the world for free for the past year in luxury, um, not just flying on Frontier and like Southwest, but I'm flying on first class and sometimes even on private jets. Um, on top of that, how to maximize your credit line. Um, I'm going to show you the secrets on how, how I got to $3 million in lines of credit across my personal and my business credit in just a year. And the last one is how to get some cash back. So you can actually use credit cards. There's, secret, there's secrets out there that we can't just share because if we share it, then the banks are going to come in and shut it down. So we're actually going to limit the amount of people into this course because not everybody can know these secrets on how to make money using credit cards. Not just using your credit line to make money, but using the reward side to make money. So if you're not already in it, um, if you're on Facebook Live, it's tylopez.com forward slash credit secrets. If you're on Instagram, tylopez.com forward slash credit line. If you're on Twitter, tylopez.com slash build credit. And if you're on YouTube, it's tylopez.com slash credit hacks. So um, go ahead and sign up. Ty's actually covering half of the costs for the next seven days. So uh, make sure you get in the next seven days. And only these links that we just posted here will have that, uh, that half, that, that 50% off offer. So go ahead, jump in. I have to he head out to my jet, so I will see you guys later. Hit me up on the DMs, uh, you know, add me on Snap, and I'll see you guys later.